Hi, welcome to the course of VFSX1. In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the conservation laws of energy for the fluids. And then particularly, we're going to talk about the Bernoulli's equation and its applications into the lot circulation. If you remember last time, we talked about the continued equation, which basically tells us that amount of the fluid, which is passing through the cross-section area per unit of time, is unchanged over the whole tube. For example, if I've got a tube with the two different uh, cross-section area in the beginning and at the end, then e even though the cross-section area are different, the amount of the fluid which is passing through this tube per unit of time is the same. So the, cross, uh, so the volumetric flow rate, which is the amount of the fluid per cross-section per unit of time, is, uh, is found by multiplication of the area, the cross-section area in the beginning, multiplied to the velocity. And this is going to be the same as at the end. So the, at the end, this is going to be equal to the multiplication of the cross-section area to the velocity. So since we decrease the cross-section area, and since the multiplication should be the same as in the beginning, then the velocity should be, should be higher, right? So if we decrease the cross-section area, then the velocity is going to be higher. So we can see this using the p-hat simulation. So this is the p-hat simulation when the water, for example, is going through the, uh, the tube, the pipe, and we can measure the cross-section area in the different parts of this tube. For example, here, the cross-section area is equal to the 3.1 meters in the square. So let's make it to be equal to the five meters square, for example. So if I make this five meters in the square, then the velocity obviously is going to change. So can you guess what's going to be the velocity? So I'm going to measure the speed of the, uh, of the water. So here, the speed of the water is going to be equal to the one meters per second. So that the multiplication of the one to the five meters in the square is going to give me 5,000 liters per second. This is how much water is passing through this cross-section area for every second, which is the same for all the part of the pipe. So uh, if I decide to, sorry, so if I decide to change the cross-section area, not, uh, not to the five, or oh, let's make it smaller, for example, one meters in the square. If you make it one meter in a square, then the velocity obviously is going to be higher. So that the multiplication should be again five liters, right? So the speed is going to be equal to the five. So that the multiplication of the five to the one meter in a square is going to give you again the five liters per second. So the continued equation is really cool. It does tell us the connection between the velocity and the cross section area, but it doesn't really include lots of physics into the equation. For example, it doesn't include the pressure the height of the fluid, or the density. So the Bernoulli equation is kind of the extension of the continuous, continued equation. Um, and it's, it's, it includes such a physical unit like a pressure or the density. So if you remember, the density was equal to the mass over the volume. So we can look to this density as the physical unit, which is proportional to the mass. So, uh, it, 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 so the total energy is the sum of these three terms in so it looks really long and not, not really understandable. So what we would like to do is we would like to try to understand this. Uh, what does the terms of this total energy mean? So the first term means the pressure. It is basically how, uh, so it, it, in your fluid, how the particles of your fluid are forcing to each other, right? So the, fluid, so the pressure is proportional to the force, if you remember. So this is uh, the total energy is equal to the force plus so this term, so if you look to this term from the different perspective, so rho g y doesn't tell us lots of things for us, but if you look to this rho as the mass, for example, and y as the height, then this formula becomes like mgh, which is like more familiar for us, which is the formula for the potential energy. So it appears the second term is the potential energy. And the third term here, if I look to the third term again from the different perspective, like a rho, is going to be equal like or proportional to the mass. It's going to be one over t mass multiplied to the velocity in the square, one over t and v in the square, it's going to be the kinetic energy. So it appears the total energy of the fluid is going to be the sum of the pressure plus the potential energy plus the kinetic energy, which is more or less understandable for us. And the Bernoulli's equation is going to tell us that the total energy is conserved overall the path of the fluid inside the pipe. So if I've got this pipe, for example, where the velocity, the height, and the pressure is different in the beginning than at the end of this pipe, 
then the total energy is going to be the same. For example, the total energy of the fluid in the beginning of the pipe is equal to the velocity V1. Um, uh, sorry, so it depends on the velocity, it depends on the height, and it depends on the pressure. So this is going to be the same at the end of this pipe. So at the end of the pipe, if the height is equal to the y2, the velocity is equal to the v2, and the pressure is equal to the p2, then the total energy of the fluid at the end is going to be the same as the total energy of the fluid in the beginning. So this is the Bernoulli equation, which basically tells us that the total energy is conserved. So at the same time, the Bernoulli equation is going to reveal us the connection between the three physical quantities, like a velocity, the pressure, and the height. So basically, if I change the velocity, if I increase the velocity, how much the pressure is going to change. So let's look to this problem. So let's say I've got this kind of tube where the height of the fluid are going to be the same. Basically, y1 is equal to the y2. So I'm going to use the Bernoulli equation in order to understand how the velocity is going to change the pressure. So here, for example, the stem, which is rho g y1, is going to be the same as the rho g y2, since the heights are the same, right? So the rho here is the density of the fluid, for example, for the water, it's equal to the 1,000 um, meters cube. Uh, uh, so 1,000 kilogram over meters in the, in the cube. So in this case, it's going to be equal to, so this term is equal to this term, so that we can just simply cancel them. So if you look to this tube, to the structure of this, of this tube, the cross-sectional area is becoming smaller at the end. It means that the velocity of the fluid is increasing according to the continuity equation, right? So the velocity here, or the kinetic energy, is increased. So that is why the pressure at the end of the tube is going to decrease, so that the total energy is going to be the same. So the Bernoulli equation implies for me that if I increase the velocity, the pressure is going to decrease. And let's look to this again using the p-hat simulation here. So in the p-hat simulation, what I would like to do is I would like to change the cross-section area at the end of the pipe. And if you remember, if I change the cross-section area, the velocity of the fluid is going to be different, right? So the velocity of the fluid in the beginning, when the cross-section area is higher, is equal to the 1.6 meters per second. And at the end, the velocity is going to be increased since the cross-section area is decreased. Right, so let's measure the cross-section area in the beginning and at the end. So in the beginning, the cross-section area is equal to the 3.1 meters in the square, and at the end, it's equal to the 1.5 meters in the square. So now let's check the pressure in the beginning of the tube and at the end in order to understand how the pressure is changing when we change the velocity. So the pressure in the beginning of the tube is equal to the 123 uh, kilopascals. And at the end of this tube, the speed is increased. It means that the pressure is going to decrease, right? So at the end of this tube, the pressure is equal to the 118 kilopascals. The pressure is decreased. So the Bernoulli equation, basically, one of the consequences of the Bernoulli equation is tell us that the, if you increase the velocity, the pressure is going to decrease. So now let's uh, look to the same equation, to the equation of the Bernoulli, and try to understand how the, what is the connection between the height and the pressure. So I'm going to look to this kind of tube where the cross-section area in the beginning and at the end are the same. So since the cross-section areas are the same, it doesn't matter what is the height, the velocity of the fluid is going to be the same because according to the continued equation, the velocity depends on the cross-sectional area, right? So basically this term, one over two rho v1 in the square is going to be the same as a one over two rho v in the square because v1 is equal to the v2, they can be cancelled. So uh, I have this, this terms now. So since here, the, so since I changed the tube like this, so the height here at the end of the tube is going to be higher. So basically y2 is higher. So the height is increased. So according to the conservation law of the total energy or according to the law Bernoulli's equation, then the pressure is going to decrease. So if I increase the height, then the pressure is decreased. And this works in a different direction as well. So if basically if I decrease the height, then the pressure is going to increase. And we can check this using, again, the p-hat simulation here. So what I would like to do is I would like to change the height of the pipe at the end. So we can, change for, we can check, for example, the speed, the velocity of the fluid in the beginning or at the end of the pipe. So they're going to be the same because the cross-sectional area are the same. So we just change the height. But if I say, so for example, we can check out the height of the pipe. 
So in the beginning, it basically starts from one meters, for example, and at the end, it basically starts roughly from the two meters. It's obvious, but it's obvious that at the end, uh, the pipe is the the height of the pipe is higher. So now I would like to understand if I just increase the height of the fluid at the end of the tube, how the pressure is going to change. Check change. So the Bernoulli's equation suggests me that the uh, the pressure is going to decrease, right? So at the beginning, the pressure is equal to the 120 kilopascals, and at the end, when the height is increased, the pressure is equal to the 110 kilopascals. So the, the another amplifications of the Bernoulli equation is that if we increase the height, then the pressure is going to decrease. So it tells us the connection between the height and the pressure. So let's solve one problem. Then later on, we're going to talk about the applications of the Bernoulli equation into the blood circulation. So I've got the syringe um, with the cross-section area 2.5 uh, times 10 in the power of minus 5 meters in the square. So there was a liquid, uh, chemical liquid with a density of water, which is 1,000. And I would like to push the pump so that the water or the, or the liquid is going to go out from the needle. And what I would like to do is if I push this with the force, which is equivalent to the two newtons, what's going to be the velocity of the fluid at the end of, of this tube or at the end of the syringe. So in order to do this, we're going to use the, uh, the Bernoulli's equation. So the Bernoulli equation basically tells me that the total energy here and this part of the syringe is going to be the same as the, uh, as the total energy of the fluid at this part in the needle. So since the uh, uh, syringe is, uh, is lying horizontally, the velocity of the fluids are going to be the same, basically y1 is equal to y2, so that I can just cancel it out. So at the same time, p1 minus p2, the change of the pressure is equivalent to the force over the area. So by the definition, the pressure is how much force you're applying to, the, uh, to, the, to some area, to the unit of the area. Basically, if you apply more force, then your pressure is going to increase. And if you're, if you're applying the, the same force for the bigger area, then your pressure is going to decrease. So the pressure is, is proportional to the force and it inversely proportional to the area. And, and, and here we are given that the force is equal to the two newtons, the area is equal to the 2.5, times 10 in the power of minus five meters in a square. So this is going to be equal to the eight times 10 in the power of four pascals. So what I would like to do is, I would like to just simplify the things here. So the P, if the P2 goes to the left, it's going to go with the negative sign, right? So here I, I will assume that the velocity of the fluid here is going to be simply uh, zero because it really depends on, on my force, right? How, 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 uh, how, what is the strength of the force which I'm applying to the pump here? So the velocity v1 is going to be this, uh, is equal to the zero, then I will, I will get this formula. From here, I would like to find the velocity v2 of the liquid at the end, right? So in order to do this, we're going to use the mathematical, like we are going to do some mathematical operations. For example, this t goes out, up, the rho goes down, then we are going to have this formula which tells me that the V2 in the square is equal to this one. So then the V2 is going to be simply the square root of the left-hand side part, right? So the left-hand side part, we know that the P1 minus P2 is equal to the eight times 10 in the power of one uh, plus four, multiplied to the two divided to the rho, which is 1,000 for the water, which is the density of the water. And if you simplify everything, we're going to get 12.6, which is going to be the velocity of the fluid at the end of the needle. So for example, the, the Bernoulli's equation is going to allow us to find the velocity of the fluid at the end of the needle. If you are, so if you know the cross section area of this wrench, and also we know the force which we are applying into this wrench. So what I would like to do, uh, so what I would like to discuss with you at the end is um, uh, a bit the uh, the the flow of the bloods inside the uh, vessels, blood vessels. So let's say I've got this kind of pipe where the, the different particles of the uh, fluids are interacting between each other. So the particles of the fluids and the, and the borders of this pipe are going to interact between each other more. So there will be more, more friction in the borders of, of, your, of your pipe than in the center. So in the center, the, the uh, particles are going to move more or less freely. So that is why the velocity in the center 
of, of your pipe is going to be higher than the velocity of the particles at the borders of your pipe. So the velocity in the center of the, of the particles are going to be more than the velocity of the particles in the borders because less friction in the center. So if you remember the Bernoulli's equation, it tells us that if I increase the velocity, then the pressure is going to decrease. Okay. So, since, so the pressure, so the Bernoulli's equation tells me that the pressure in the middle, in the center of the pipe, is smaller than the pressure in the borders of the pipe. So since the pressure here in the, in the center is smaller, then the lots of particles are going to move to the center. Okay? So you can imagine this like if the car is going into the water, so in the, in the, a little bit deeper in the water, the pressure around the car is more higher. And if you just open the window, one of the windows of the car, then the water is going to try come inside the car since the pressure inside the car is smaller than the pressure outside the car. So the pressure here is going to be higher than inside the car. So that's why the water is going to come in. Right? So the same idea is here. So since the pressure in the center of the pipe is smaller, then the water is going to try to move through the center of the pipe. So this is, the, so this is what we can see as the flow of the blood inside the vessels of the human, uh, inside the vessels. So lots of particles of the blood are going to move in the center of the, um, of the vessels since the pressure there is smaller. And not so many particles are going to move in the near the borders of the vessels. So this is one of the applications of the Bernoulli's equation. So we've learned today the conservation of law of energy, um, which is going to allow us to connect lots of physical units for the fluids.